message, and that is it stops growing on your head. It starts growing other places. You get in your nose, your eyebrow hair starts to get long, you get in your ears. What's going on here? We don't really know why hair starts growing in the wrong places, as annoying as it is. Probably, I think what's happening is that we have this evolutionary program where we used to be a lot hairier six to 10 million years ago, and those stem cells are still ready to grow thick hair in our ears, on our nose, wherever it, it, you don't want it to grow. And that the changes in the structure of the, of the DNA, the, what we call the epigenome, is changing over time. And that those regions that are normally silent in the ears, so you don't get big hairy ears, are unraveling as part of the aging process. So these are parts of ancient genetic code that have been, uh, that have been allowed to escape from the, from the histones, and now they're readable by the cells. Right, and we become our ancestors, unfortunately. So shave or pluck that out for now. But that, what that means is we would predict that if we can slow down aging using the methods that we've talked about in this and other episodes, we should also prevent that process from happening or at least delay it till much later in life. Would that be the case with graying hair too? Uh, it could be because graying is part of not just a genetic program but can be accelerated by things that are also known to accelerate aging itself, such as psychological stress. And we, this is really interesting because we know from some fairly recent research that stress plays a key, I mean, it's always been sort of known, oh, you're going to make me go gray, right, my grandmother? You're going to make me go gray. And I'd be like, grandma, you're already gray. But um, we've long known that gray hair is associated with stress. Um, what's coming out now is that it doesn't have to be permanent. It's been known for probably centuries that you can have these binary colored hairs where they at the tip of the hair, it's dark, and then it's gray in the middle, and then dark again at the bottom. And people have wondered what the heck is going on. And just recently, in 2021, a group of researchers had a look at what was happening in people's lives during that gray hair growth period. And they found that they were remarkably stressful periods of those people's lives, where, where they, they didn't stop working, they didn't, they didn't sleep, they didn't go on a vacation. And so I think it's very clear that stress can induce gray hair, a loss of color from the hair. But what's also remarkable about, about that finding is that it proves that gray hair is reversible. Which means that what we're talking about here is, is an epigenetic effect. Sure. I mean, anything that is genetic is, is essentially irreversible. Right. So this is an, an epigenetic effect. What I would imagine is that after you've been gray for many, many years, it's going to be very difficult to reverse that. But in the early phases, when you're getting this spattering of gray and color, gray and color, you are able to get those those packages of DNA back to where they were when you were young using some of the methods that we're talking about today and we've talked about in other episodes. And this has to do with those stem cells that produce pigment, they're uh, mel melanocytes. Yep. And these sit right next to our hair shafts. They do, and they, they inject the color as the keratin is being put together into that, that hair shaft. And the prevailing theory as to why we get gray is that these melanocytes die through a process called apoptosis. Hopefully that isn't true. I think it's true for very late in life, but what we're seeing in this new study is that they become dysfunctional before they die. And that's a period that we have a chance to recover their function uh, and prevent them from dying. And there are a number of ways that I could think of at least to reverse that and prevent them from dying. One way though would be to use some of these adversity memetics to get that epigenome to reset. That's what some researchers have done in mice, at least, in a fairly recent study, actually this year, um, using a combination compound, uh, including uh, cyclosporin A, minoxidil, which is the, the cream that we talked about earlier, and then another pigment-promoting drug. We dug into this a little today and got really excited by what we found. Yeah, because the paper tries to obscure what this actual chemical is, this age-reversing um, and pigment-promoting drug. Turns out it's called tacrolimus which is a very similar molecule to rapamycin, or also known as sirolimus, which we've mentioned in earlier episodes, is one of the main drugs that can extend lifespan and inhibit this complex of proteins called mTOR that responds to fasting. And like cyclosporin, it's an immunosuppressant, which means it's an adversity mimetics. It's, it's showing your cells that times are not all that great right now. Right, it's making your stem cells freak out that things are going to be rough and maybe we should be rejuvenated and start growing a little better. I just want to mention this cyclosporin A. It's really interesting. You said it's an immunosuppressant. It's used to prevent organ rejection. In my lab, we found it also rejuvenates mitochondria through actually making sure that what's called the mitochondrial permeability transition pore or MPTP is preserved. 
Long story short, I think this combination of cyclosporin A for mitochondrial activity, minoxidil, which we talked about is blood flow, improved blood flow, and this pigment promoting, promoting drug, which is basically a, an analog of rapamycin, which simulates a, a fasting response, is the triple combo for hair repigmentation. This is not yet ready for human use. Undoubtedly, there's probably somebody trying this out in Hollywood. But as of right now, uh, this is still sometime in the future. I think so. You know, pe people are already trying rapamycin as a drug, 10 milligrams uh, every week or so. This is, this is only being done by a few people under doctor supervision. But I could imagine that there will be products made available to the general public one day that would definitely restore hair color. It's not a miracle that this happens. It's just science and we're going to figure it out. And here's just like another one of those cases where when we address an aging pathway, we're addressing things that are downstream of that aging pathway. And this really relates, I think, really well to a, a general theme of what we've been talking about over the past few episodes, which is probably the individual problems that come with aging that we talk about right now are not the things that need to be addressed if we can hit aging somewhere upstream of those problems. Yeah. And another important point is that when we learn how to reverse aging in the skin and rejuvenate the hair and get it to produce more color, those lessons can be, apl can be applied across the body because all cells have a fundamental root cause of aging and the same defense pathways against that process. So for instance, rapamycin, cyclosporin, minoxidil, these could be used perhaps in really low doses and under clinical conditions tested to see if they have rejuvenating effects in other organs as well. So maybe right now we're trying to figure out how to help people keep their hair more colorful, try to keep it in their scalp rather than on the floor. But sometime down the road, we could be addressing things that are uh, far, of far greater importance to far more people. Right. And, and we foresee a day in my lab where you can take a pill, maybe three pills, and you'll not just get younger, but your hair will regrow and become dark again if you wanted to.